All right, my guest today is a Grammy and Golden Globe nominated singer and songwriter who had a massive worldwide hit with the song Far From Over from the soundtrack to the film Staying Alive. His latest song, Don't Wanna Fight With Me, is the new single from the film Expendables 2, which happens to be the number one movie at the box office this week. It's a pleasure to welcome to the program Frank Stallone. Frank, it's great to talk with you again. Thank you, Joe. It's uh, nice talking to you again, for sure. You know, uh, through the years, you've contributed so much great music to, um, well, to so many things, but to your brother's films especially. Uh, your work really seems to complement each other well. Do you, do you enjoy getting to work with family? Yeah, I do. I, the, the funny thing is, Joe, we started out together. In other words, I've been a musician most of my life, and when my brother got the opportunity to do his own movie, Rocky, basically I was the only musician he knew because he wasn't in the music business, and he asked me to... Uh, write a song for the movie. It was a low-budget movie, so I wrote and sang with my group, Take You Back, which was the street corner song in the beginning of Rocky. And from there, it was kind of, we almost started our careers together as far as the public was concerned. And uh, one thing led to another. And, you know, I, I think he always kind of, you know, trusted my my ability to, to come through when he needed me and uh, kind of go the extra mile. So when this came up, uh, I, I knew it was going to be a big movie. I wanted to be a part of it, and I just said, how can I contribute to it? Because I know they were using mostly oldies and, and things like that. So we, you know, we, I kind of tailor-made it for, for, for the movie, and uh, it came out quite good, and we're out there promoting it. And, uh, that could, like, again, it could be purchased from uh, iTunes or, or, or my website, frankstallone.com. And, and, and it's kind of interesting. It seems like the uh, record business is going that way now, you know. Yeah, it's definitely uh, going to the, the online route. I think the, uh, the days of the, uh, the physical copy are, are kind of numbered. But, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, in a, in, a, in a way, the online distribution, I think it gets it out there to a, a larger audience faster. And, oh, it does. I mean, you know, again, not taking anything away because that's when I had my biggest hit was – it was more of a hands-on, you know, the record promoter coming into the station, and which was a lot of fun, actually. I mean, in-station uh, stuff was a lot of fun, and uh, but it's just it's just a different business. All the record companies just seem to have folded, and uh, this is the, this is where we're at, and uh, and it's not bad. I mean, I have, I mean, I, I like I said, I put up a big website just came up about two weeks ago called FrankStallone.com. And I, on my Facebook, and I have a fan page called Frank Stone Official. So if all the people out there would go to it, Frank Stone Official, and give it a like, it all helps in the promotion of everything you do. And it's just the way of the world right now, I think. So when you uh, approach working on a song for a film like this, um, especially you know with it's one of your brother's films, maybe uh, you might approach it differently. Do you guys bounce uh, you know ideas off of each other? Do yeah, Joe. I mean, the thing is, if I can get him to like it. Then we're uh, they're they're good, you know. If I can get him to like it, that's awesome, you know. Because if he digs it, and I always include him in the process, because then you know if there's any doubt, he'll fight for it, you know. What I mean, and, ma and make sure it works. So that that we're really on point with him on that. Well, tell me a little bit about the song. Uh, Don't want to fight with me. Uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a cool uh, blues rock uh, feel. It's something a little maybe a bit of a departure from some of your past stuff, uh, what kind of, you know, did you look at like maybe a rough cut of the movie to get a feel for it, or where did this come from? I had, yes, I, I listened to, I just, you know, I popped by the office, uh, you know, when he was doing the editing editing of the film, and I saw s sporadic scenes, but I knew it was a movie where, you know, th they wanted kind of an older feel, you know, so... I kind of, we, you know, we looked into some of the old blues records I used to listen to, some of the rock bands like Canned Heat and things like that. And I basically got him on the phone when we were in the studio. I said, is this the kind of beat? Because, you know, he's visualizing it uh, different than I am, you know, being the director and editor. He's, he's seeing where, where this thing can go. And, uh, and that's how I do it. I mean, I kind of do it more instinctually. In other words, I'm not the type... Some people, like, will get a word out of a song and write a song about it, you know. I don't usually work that way. I usually kind of get a feel about it and then then throw it out there and see uh, what it, what happens. So I'm happy he was around to uh, approve it. And once he likes it, that's uh, kind of a lock. But it, believe me, it was a lot of work. I mean, a lot of rewrites, a lot of different mixes, a lot of uh, changes, so... 
So is that generally how you work? Does the music usually come first and then the lyrics? Nah, maybe about the same. They kind of come at the same time. They kind of come. They kind of come at the same time. Uh, you know, at, di- at different times. You know, so um, I don't know. I, I I think I kind of take the music first, and and then uh, I, I kind of put the lyrics around at the same time. You kind of build it from the ground up. Yeah, and build it from the ground up. Um, and sometimes, look, like Far From Over came out real fast. That We did that song real quick. And then some songs just take a long time, you know? All right, you know what? We're going to hear the new one right now. This is Frank Stallone from The Expendables 2. It's Don't Want to Fight With Me. Don't Want to Fight With Me, the latest single from the film Expendables 2. And right now we're going to continue our conversation with the artist himself, Frank Stallone. So, uh, Frank, um, so you got any other new projects you're working on? Well, yeah. I mean, going to New York next week, and we're going to be doing um, some shows like Fox and Friends and things like that. But we're working uh, on, like, everything. I mean, I, you know, I do whatever I need to do. You know, I've done films, I've done TV, I've done concert tours. So we're just going to kind of throw it all out there that's how i work you know it's i don't really stay in one thing but i like to do a lot of them and uh, and i've I've been fairly successful in each one so but it's you know it's it's just a tough business you know it's it's a different business now joe so yeah i mean thank god for social media i mean if it wasn't around i mean some people poo poo it that everyone's in everyone's uh you know backyard or something but thank god we have it i mean thank god we have it i mean guy like me or a lot of people that don't have their record deal anymore that can put out a record and uh, sometimes you can catch on you can do something on uh, YouTube and just become a phenomena overnight so that's why you know we urge people to go to my website frankstallone.com and my Facebook uh, fan page called Frank Stallone official and like it because the more 
um, the more traffic it generates, the, the easier it is uh, in the future to to produce things and let things come out. And uh, but it's been it's been quite a bit of fun, you know. And Twitter, you know, my Twitter is Stallone for real, and uh, it's it's quite a bit of fun that you know all of a sudden I get these you know readouts that people are going to my website or iTunes or whatever and clipping on the song Don't Want to Fight With Me, because that's the only place you can get it. It's not actually on the soundtrack. For some reason, they omitted it from the soundtrack. I don't know why, but but it's but it's one of the main songs in the movie was Sly talking to Liam Hemsworth. And uh, so that's we just released ourselves, and it uh, kind of makes it easier. Well, you uh, you mentioned your new website. You've got a great new website, and uh, I noticed that uh, you have some concert dates scheduled on the West Coast. Uh, any plans on coming back out here to the East? Well, I, I would like to. You know, I used to. My cousin Eddie used to live in Vineland, New Jersey, and I remember. Um, I guess it was God the summer. It was in the '60s, just hanging out there for a few weeks, and it was uh, actually a nice little town. A lot of Italians, you know, a lot of like little things. It was kind of a very cool place. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're always welcome, you know, if you're ever out this way, stop on by. Uh, I know you uh, used to be a big fan of Cowtown, right? Oh, God, Cowtown Rodeo, boy. Uh, <laughs> is that still there? It sure is, yeah. Really? Is it still active? Oh, yeah, yeah, they they, they still do the rodeo. They've got the flea market, oh, absolutely. That is terrific. That is that is something. That is great. Cowtown Rodeo. I remember Chief Halftown used to talk about it all the time. Yep, Chief Halftown and, uh, and Sally Starr, she was with our radio station for 15 years. In fact, I produced her show up till two, well, let me see, she actually retired in 2011. And, uh, uh, she, was, she was terrific. I remember watching her every day on the Sally Starr show, pop theater, every day. And I had the pleasure when I was playing Atlantic City at Trump Plaza, I invited her as my guest. And she showed up, and I got to tell you, when I announced her from the stage, people just loved it, because... All the kids grew up with Sally Starr, and she was wonderful. Oh, yeah, everybody loves my gal Sal. My gal Sal, that's it. Hey, well, you know, summer's winding down. I know you spent some time here. You know, you grew up in Philadelphia. Any uh, favorite Jersey Shore memory growing up? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, i got to tell you, the Atlantic City, in those days, going down to Steel Pier, I mean, just driving down to Atlantic City with all the vegetable and fruit stands and the big old billboards on on the on the road coming to steel pier you know the supremes or the loving spoonful it was very exciting i remember i, I saw ricky nelson there i saw a lot of people there and it was just a place to go and finally <clears throat> i remember with my group valentine we did play uh, the steel pier show with ed hurst and uh, i i got to do some of those things but it was a little later it was a little later than you know i would have liked to but you know we can't have everything but it was that was an exciting part of Atlantic City, the Steel Pier, and you know the whole diving horse, and it was before the gambling, and it was still kind of a little resort town, and Cape May. It's just really nice, you know. Uh, Frank, it's been such a pleasure talking with you this morning. Would you mind doing a quick promo for my show? Sure, Joe. Hi, this is Frank Stone. You're listening to the Joe Cook Program on Cruising ninety two point one WVLT. Take you back. Do 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 do, take it back. Yeah 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 yeah, take it back. Do do.